Hello and welcome friends to another episode of Let's Play in the Athenaeum Tabletop Campaign. Um, before I begin, I wanted to immediately address the elephant in the room. Due to some circumstances, I will just say, um, Adam is no longer going to be participating in the campaign um, from this point forward. The details of which I'm not really going to get into uh, out of respect for Adam's privacy. So my apologies to everyone who might be affected or disappointed by these news. Uh, Lonic is still going to be a character in this story. He may not have a huge role um, for the next few sessions, but um, one thing that Adam did tell me was that he did feel that Lonic was fortunately able to tie up all the loose ends and have um, a, a satisfying satisfying arc with his character, which which I think is is great. The plan is for uh, Lonic to have some sort of epilogue uh, material uh, just to tie up everything at the very end. So now that I've addressed that, let's jump right into the uh, warm-up question because we're officially in the end game right now and things for those of you who remember watching, is a little bit sandboxy at the moment, which is a bit unorthodox, I understand. Um, but we're gonna give it a try and see how it goes. So the warm question for today, because I believe the players mentioned that they had intended in going to Sue's world today. Um, so the question is, uh, taking, taking away your flavor senshi powers, if your character were to be in a superhero Power Rangers anime action type of story um, and if they became a superhero themselves what sort of superhero would they be uh, this can be a totally uh, original um, idea that you come up with from scratch or if you want to say that uh, you would be something that is inspired by an existing superhero like you were like I think my character would be some sort of a Cyclops or a Wolverine type of superhero or a Sailor Moon type of superhero you're welcome to do that as well and just for funsies uh, I invited the cast to pick another NPC that's not Sue because Sue's I'm just gonna say Sailor Moon because that is how she's been in what she was inspired by uh, pick a different NPC character and I will answer that exact same question a super apparent easy way to go would be something like the shadow for Sam, but I think it's kind of too easy. So I would say for a superhero, I would actually think that Sam would love being able to blend daredevil and nightcrawler. So still have that, uh, you know, go for justice aspect, but being able to teleport to do it. I think would be really cool. It'd be so much easier to meddle with evidence if you can just teleport it wherever you want it. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Star would be an original thing because Star would kind of touch on the elements if Star were a superhero. So I guess you could, I guess, kind of say the moonish or winks, if that makes sense. So each version of Star would be a different element um, and they would be automatically split apart already and then they would transform into whatever special element uh that they are or or it would play with like astrological signs and that would be their ability based on the astrological signs because they are a star hopefully that makes sense uh since black powders is a lot of uh especially originally and still kind of involves with a lot of like mind tricks and stuff it would be some weird amalgamation of like mysterio scarlet witch and doctor strange <laughs> so actually surprisingly very magic-y but dealing with illusions and reality alteration and stuff like that so he would be more of a super villain instead of a superhero i would say anti-hero like anti venom he goes back and forth <laughs> okay like venom a little bit deadpoolish there we go for Tori, I was going to use Scarlet Witch too, but I'll go with something else. I think um, she would probably, I, I'm just going to copy Raven because I am a big fan of Raven. So I think she would be a lot like Raven. Yeah. 
That's so Raven. I know it's not that one, but <laughs> I, just, I, just feel like the, I just wanted to say that's so Raven. Okay. That's so Tori. Okay. Yeah, Frank, it's interesting because I... I'm kind of already playing Frankie as like a superhero. Like I kind of, I kind of created him a little bit like that. And, um, and I think that the easy one would be like a Superman trope, but I kind of want to say that I want to spice that up a little bit. Cause there's like a Superman version in every comic in different types. Like there's always a Superman type for anything. Right. And I wanted to think like maybe because of his psychic abilities, he becomes a more of a versatile type of a character. Um, maybe like a green lantern type where he has like, instead of an armor, he has this ring or thing that then gives him all of these crazy powers to fight. Um, but some, I don't know, maybe something along, you know, cause he's a little bit of a mix of the two. Um, but I would lean on something like, yeah, if Superman and Green Lantern had a child, that would be Frankie. <laughs> I, I would read that. Superman and <laughs> Green Lantern had a child. <laughs> would you like to propose an NPC for me to answer that question with? Can I say Stormy? <laughs> I was going to say Stormy as well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm down I, mean, for that. Yeah. I mean, my knee jerk reaction, honestly, as soon as you see Stormy, is as an 80s kid, I have to say Thundercats. <laughs> I <have to> say, <laughs> he's got some lion o thing going on. More lion o, less snarf. But um, yes. actually, he probably should would have a snarf. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Um, no, yeah, that would be kind of cool. I kind of see, honestly, I feel like I would see everyone from the orphanage from. Uh, B- Bloomingdale. What was the orphanage name? Bloomingdale's. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see all of them as like the Thundercats clan. I don't know for some reason, sort of like a Lost Boys slash Thundercats slash. I don't know if Orphan Annie was was a band <laughs> of superheroes. Like if the entire orphanage or band was a band of superheroes, like that'd be kind of cool. So yeah. yeah, let's go with that. I support it. You have just gotten the big major reveal from Dan the Man about why you're all here and what happened. Uh, I don't know if anyone is, upon hearing all of this, if anyone is having an existential crisis, I wouldn't blame you if you did. If anyone's wondering, Sue looks very, um, she's very contemplative about the whole thing. I think she's still processing everything herself. Yeah, basically it stars in the same Stars in the same place saying, you know, looking at Dan and saying, I'm I'm grateful, but seriously, did you have to give us all trauma? I'm just I'm just curious. Mm-hmm. Well, I was told that if you're gonna make a decent story, there needs to be conflict. Otherwise, nobody would want to read your story. True. And he looks at Black Powder, and he looks at M. I mean, at, at Tori, <laughs> and he's like, "But did you have to go so dark with you know?" And he's like, "You know, really, really." I I borrowed some things from some of my favorite books and movies and shows. I sort of just borrowed what I thought were cool. I don't know. I thought all of your stories were cool. Did you come up with that? Did you come up with that Death by Honey video, too? Because that was really... What the hell, man? <laughs> Death by Honey thing. Oh, yeah. I actually... Well, yeah, I sort of, like, kind of copied that from a novel that that I read about called Dreams of the Dying. Out of character, that's an actual book. Dreams of the Dying, which I'm plugging, um, <clears throat> that a friend of mine wrote as a novel. Mm-hmm. And actually, yes, a lot of, a lot of the stuff from... Uh, Death by Honey. I think he actually called it Death by Honey in that book. So, <laughs> shameless plug out of character. Nicholas Litzau. Uh, Link in the description. <laughs> 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 I'm just going to look over at Sam's question. Is Sam's firearm anywhere visible? Is it? Um, he's holding it in his pocket, but it's not visible. Okay. Black Powder is visibly, like, mad. <laughs> But he's not saying anything. <laughs> Tori's 
Tori can definitely pick up pick up on how mad BP looks. Cause she's also just as angry. I mean, if it makes you all feel better, like my fate, fate isn't that great either. I'm kind of, I don't have my own story other than, you know, I've got this basketball or this, this court thing that I'm sort of stuck in for the rest of my days. That sounds so terrible. Mm. Yeah, I mean. Better than a 16 year old getting chopped up to death or people drowning and dying and young men nearly going crazy. So, so hard. Yeah, well, hate to break it to you, but my real life isn't that great either. As in the stuff that goes on. I mean, my life was fine. I didn't have to worry about that kind of stuff, but. Keep talking, kid. I'm not helping your case. You can get angry at me all you want, but I'm at the end of the day, not the actual person you should be angry with because I'm not the actual person who wrote the story. I'm just a personification of the person who wrote the story. So maybe take it up to them, to the manager. I'm not the manager is what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just the messenger, I guess. That looks like the manager. And apparently shares a lot of the same views of said manager. And since you're, since you're not real, I mean, if anything happens to you, you're not real, right? Doesn't really matter, right? It's just entertainment. Yeah, whatever serves the story, really. But I mean, we are real. It doesn't matter. I mean, you're real, we're all real. We, it doesn't matter if it started out as not real. I feel real. Yeah, I feel real too. My life was real. With you guys. Exactly. I mean, feels real to me, feels real to me. I mean, growing up as a kid, sometimes me and my friends would talk about you know, what if we're actually just a bunch of brains inside of jars this entire time? I don't know, maybe that was true. But even then, I don't know if that would necessarily devalue my life experiences, if even if that were true. I mean, what is the difference between this and believing in God, right? Who knows everything and basically created everything to be the way it's supposed to be. It's no different, except now we know who it is. We know the man behind the curtain, and it's just a man, a regular basketball playing man. That's why we're mad. Damn the man. Damn the man. Yeah. So, <clears throat> as someone who does believe in God, Frankie, <laughs> uh, so completely understanding your allegory, <clears throat> my issue is that clearly he does not give a shit about what we were put through for the sake of a story. That's not treating people like they're alive. It, there is suffering everywhere, right? That, uh, there's something to be learned from the suffering. True, there is suffering everywhere. It's just when a certain group of people deliberately by a non-god are put through the absolute ringer like the shit you've gone through in your world, Agatha's death. Well, For wait, the sake no, of a story? I, Agatha I died? Agree. Dan says. You're the one who set it up. You started everything, right? Which means you set up the course of events. I guess that's true. There's no amount of justifying that shite. Because you wrote everyone's backstories, you wrote that Tori lost her sister? That whole mess in Sam's world was you coming up with it? I don't really know what you want me to say. See, the reason why I had to watch those two have sex in Sam's world? Whoa, I don't remember that part. I was trying to keep <coughs> it as PG as possible, with the exception of the honey part. Definitely not, not safe for work. <laughs> Tori's going to be like... Dan, what do you remember writing exactly? I mean, I wrote it, the everybody's backstories, and then that was pretty much it. I think that's all I needed to do. Uh, did I answer your question? 
Not really. So after you wrote our backstories and we began to become manifestations of these characters, that was it? That's all you did? And we you're essentially saying we wrote the rest ourselves based on our own actions? Yeah. Once I set up the world and the, I guess, origins of the main characters, uh, from that point on, you have full control of your lives from that point forward. I don't really have anything to do with it at that point. You make your own decisions. Very well. So once we came into the library. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I was setting it up so you would all end up in the library, you see. Mimicking how the Athenaeum works, basically. But then once you're in the library, that's... I don't know. It kind of just writes itself. Literally writes itself. So that's the point that we were given our free will, if you will? I think that's how that works, yeah. Does everybody else get free will too? Like Victor and Henry and Stormy and Jim? Yeah, I can't... I don't write any of their decisions. They, they just do whatever it is they're supposed to do based on how their characters were defined. Yeah, you're really shitty. You are. Like, you could have started something very different. I mean, look at Bee's world. That could have been all of us. It was, they were happy from the beginning. Yeah, well, kids' books, they don't always have conflicts. You know? Spot, see spot, see spot run. The end. Which is great for kids. Maybe not so great for anyone above the age of six, necessarily. Dan, I meant what I said earlier. I'm happy I exist. But really, you suck ass. Come on, B. I'm getting some ice cream. <laughs> Anybody want ice cream with me? I'm so over this conversation. I'll join you. I'll pretend to have ice cream because Dan the man here uh, <laughs> set it up so I wouldn't have ice cream, so... Uh, you all can leave. Dan definitely looks affected by your words. I don't think, I don't think he's used to being, being told all of this about himself. So he's just, he, he probably will just frown and, I mean, he's not going to say anything else if you all just want to leave his, um, stadium, his stadium, his court room. Courtroom. <laughs> <laughs> From one courtroom to another courtroom. Right. Yeah, Frankie just uh, pouts and, and like, mm, you've been touched by an angel girl. <laughs> 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 and like turns. Let me get my caramel ice cream then. I think it makes sense, uh, Sue says. I mean, like he said, a good story needs to have a beginning a middle, which is the conflict, and then the resolution. And it seemed like we got our bookmarks after we at least resolved some major conflict, some major conflict in our respective worlds. Here's the difference though. Most stories don't come to life. When you're messing with real people's lives and emotions, like it, the fact that he wouldn't even take any responsibility for it, just, oh, I just wrote the stories. It's just a good story. After that, it's all up to you. He set everything up knowing damn well things were going to get messy for everyone. I wasn't defending anything he said. I was just trying to figure out ah. the mechanics of this all I and see. like, and why the bookmarks appear when they did and why this is happening because we've resolved the conflict that he set up at least and but life goes on, you know, just because the story ends doesn't mean that there are loose ends or more going on with that character. Yeah. Oh, I always never wanted to think, you know, what necessarily came after 
it's like Cinderella's story. Did, did she and the prince actually get divorced? I don't know. It's better for me to just not worry about it. But then, then maybe that makes me just as bad as Dan the Man. That I don't really want to know or care about what happened to the characters after Happily Ever After. Trust it's, me, Sue, you're better than him because you actually care about people. That part. <sighs> Nothing like him. Well, in his defense, um, I don't know of how many people he necessarily directly caused death, but, you know, I'm still trying to get past that. <laughs> get yourself some ice cream, Sue. I forgot the defense part. I don't know what you were trying to say there. But he could have set us up better, but I'm not horribly upset upset. I'm like, it, some of it was just unnecessary. For the sake of what? Entertainment? <laughs> Out of character, I find this very ironic, considering you all are the ones who created... <laughs> You're all the ones that created all the miserable things that your characters went through. <laughs> like Thistle, for example, is the one yeah. who wrote back to the dump. So yeah. I find this whole thing very, very oh, mad I, and very I, ironic. As a writer, I am always aware. It's like, man, if my characters ever came to life, I would owe so many freaking apologies. Yeah, right? no. Like, as creators, for sure. Mm -hmm. Like, we, we need conflict and drama and misery to kickstart a hero's journey. The, yeah. thing, the things that your characters are telling to Dan the Man now are probably what they would be telling yeah. you individually right <laughs> now. Like, <laughs> that's why I find this whole thing very ironic. Like, why? That up. It's like, really, Alex? Well, why, Alex? Why, why did you? Did you? <laughs> I know. I know. Like, poor Frankie and Vic, they went through so much torture. Sure. Oh my goodness. Just for a, a tabletop game? Just for a. What? <laughs> a tortured backstory for my character? What? Are you kidding? Yeah, we're all avatars for Dan the Man. You're all. You're, we're all Dan the Man. That's the thing. We're yes. all we were that hand under that puppet, baby. We're that. Yep. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Exactly. I'm sorry. Sorry. No, it's it's out. hilarious. It's, it's really hilarious. It's like it's it, it is very like very meta. Like, what would our characters do had they know that we did? Like, oh my god, this is yeah. this is my head is spinning. Yeah, right. This is probably gonna also take up like most of the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> yes. right. Oh boy. Oh my goodness, this is funny. So, for the sake of a good story, and Dan the man loves good stories. Why don't we send them to? One of our worlds, so he can experience this great story that he created. Well, he's already been to Lonix, kind of. He's, I guess, he's done that once. He wouldn't mind doing it again. Oh, not not Lonix. I don't something else. I don't think he's sending him least... anywhere is gonna affect him or his his. Uh, you know, writer. I would just assume he not be messing around any further with anybody else. I'd say let him play his game. I'd rather have not be in this library. We can shut the door. <laughs> Lock it. I kind of feel sorry for his virgin that's stuck here playing basketball, you know? Because he could have written himself as the main character and hero of this story and instead he just made him a goblin in the closet that's a good point i didn't think about that and then frankie's still like scooping ice cream into his mouth <laughs> as he's saying this, like... he's almost sort of like that narrator that you know kicks off the story and then you don't really hear back from them until the end kind of thing yeah mm. Well, anywho, I don't care. I am still real, and you are all real, and we all have will of our own to do what we have to do to help our people. Like, we still have to get Sam out yeah. of jail, um, and we need to 
have star reunited with Stormy. We need to save my friends. Tori, you need to go back to your world. Like, we still need to do things. And this doesn't matter. It's like book two of our story. It's the sequel, so to speak. Hopefully it's not a movie, because usually movie sequels usually suck. Like, really bad. Really? Yeah, mm-hmm. just, just heads up, just heads up. Good to know if I ever go see a movie. <laughs> <laughs> right? But Frankie's right. We have bigger things to worry about. And honestly, Star puts down the spoon and says, that bitch didn't even give me parents. Could you imagine how I would have been if I had a mom and dad to talk to and interact with? Actually, I don't think I would have been much different, but still, still, I might have been a more well-rounded person. I guess I should tell Stormy. Actually, that's a good point. Are any of us going to necessarily tell anyone in our worlds that we're characters in a book? I have no intention of telling Jim, because what would that do to help him? Probably nothing. Probably just caused a lot more stress, so... At least in that case, I know I'm not going to tell him. Part of me almost wishes that I didn't even know any of this stuff. Part of me kind of wishes that I just, I don't know, was completely naive to the whole thing. Mm. Ignorance is bliss. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you didn't know, then it, everything's just bad luck. True. But then again, if that was the case, then I don't know. We would just never know why this happened to us. It would just have forever been a mystery. Which I guess Sam wouldn't have minded. <laughs> <laughs> then again, Sam probably would have just obsessed over it for the rest of his life. Speaking of which, Sam, uh, so now that this mystery has been solved, was it a little underwhelming? Well, I can say it was a twist I wasn't expecting. I think it opens up the door to even more opportunity to look at all different kinds of mysteries. Definitely an unexpected twist, but I've come to respect those uh, in many of the stories that I have been a part of. I just thought of something, though. The last world we went to, the Thetis world, they mentioned something about them actually going to the library. Not this one, but the actual one that Dan the Man was talking about. So somehow they were able to escape their world into this library. So maybe if we wanted to take it to the manager, so to speak, we could find the real Dan the Man and give him a firm talking to. Like, to the real life. So like, you had the library and then you have like, your second library type of a thing. Like, is our library like a mini version of that? Is it like a mirror of that? Hmm. I don't know. Would be really neat if that, I'm wondering if the library has a dream entertainment system and a dream kitchen and luxury pool and everything. Yeah, because I want real ice cream. Well, I mean, this is real ice cream, right? Mm-hmm. God damn, I'm very confused. <laughs> I want to eat their ice cream. Uh, I was going to say, like, let's be honest, we've already been jumping two different worlds, so this is just a whole other world of its own. Yeah, but it's like the world outside. Like, we've been inside. Uh, is it technically every outside. world outside, dude? Because if the other real library has, say, a bookmark, then would traveling there be any different than traveling to Frankie's world? That's a good point. For example. So... Yeah. Because hmm. B's world is technically within Star's world. Yeah. So I don't see how our world is different than B's world being in Star's world. Hmm. My head really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Star will pat him on the hand. <laughs> Maybe it just takes some time to digest. It's a crazy idea that I proposed, but maybe that'll be something we could pocket for another time. 
out of character a year later during the crossover. Out of character. <laughs> <laughs> it did not touch. <laughs> so what now? Well, s- story or not, I think, uh, you know, we all kind of talked about being able to help clean up Gourmet City with what's going on there. So I think regardless, we, we need to make sure that we maintain that aspect because story or not, we have to live with it. Story or not, we still have stuff to do. Are you sure that's where you want to go first? I mean, a whole town's enslaved by food creatures. I think it's pretty urgent. I, I think so, but <laughs> I, I know that all of you all have things you want to do as well. So you've been following us around and helping us all with our own worlds for literal months. We can help you with yours. <sighs> it really means a lot to be, uh, to hear you say that, BP. Star will walk up to Sue and he'll put his arm around and say, Sis, as he holds up his flavor senshi, it's time we get cooking, yeah? I think so too. Why don't we all just get ourselves ready and maybe we'll hop in the next hour? An hour from now. Sounds good. If no one else jumps in, I do want to talk to Sam. Sam wants to talk to Black Power. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Lovely. Perfect. Meeting of the dads. So literally as they get up, Black Powder will just like motion to Sam, like, follow me, please. Yeah. And like go to like either Black Powder's room or Sam's room. Either one's fine. Frankie's going to watch cartoons with the rest of his ice cream. <laughs> I'll watch cartoons with you. <laughs> well, that was a lot of bullshit, wasn't it? Well, there's lots of bullshit that can go around, so... <laughs> yeah, that's true. You've been quiet for a while, Sam. I just wanted to check in on you for a bit. Oh well, yeah, I'm good. I've uh, started to see the value in being a little more team-oriented. noticed. It's good. Got some good kids out there. You know, I I haven't completely read mm-hmm. your story, but having a good, I guess, uh, idea initially of possibilities, and then as you started putting things out and talking about what your world was I had a lot of uh, misgivings and challenges with how to interact completely with you and your world especially while we're there and to some degree I get it from his left pocket he's gonna pull out a ration um, that's labeled Franks and Beans. It's from Frankie's World. And written on it says Thursday with a question mark. Um, Frankie's or Frank's World Blah Food. He's going to hand it to you. He says, You were absolutely honest about being a cook, and I appreciate that. Sometimes, sometimes you get handed some shit, and you can't go back and make those beans anything other than mush. You can't make that sauce less like toothpaste. You can't make those weenies into slices because they're already cubed into minuscule little pieces. That bitch you're handed is just shit. But, especially someone who can cook, can take that shit and make something fantastic out of it. I knew this Betty that uh, invited me over for tea and had these appetizers. And it was one spoon with this hors d'oeuvres on it 
that one spoon bite said a lot. Before we go back to Frankie's world and have to eat more of that shit, I'd love to see what you can transform that into in a meal before we go back. I'll accept that challenge. Sam, I know you and I haven't always gotten along. I've definitely called you a hypocrite. You have been a hypocrite in the past. But you are a good man. You stay level-headed, even when things are bad. And I... I have a favor to ask you. And it ain't an easy one. If I start slipping again, don't let me. If there's a risk that I'm going to hurt someone because of anger or old habits, put an end to it. I, uh... I don't want to be that man. I can tell that there are aspects of you that have wanted to see and experience and have change. So I'll help where I can. And uh, I don't think if worse came to worse and uh, I needed help getting you on the straight and narrow, I don't think any of the others would mind assisting as well, so... I wasn't exactly talking about the intervention, Sam. I know, but uh, they can rise to the occasion. <laughs> I wanted to kill him. That damn person. But it wouldn't have changed anything. No. All it would have done is put blood on your hands and... I know. Logic kind of goes away in the state of anger. And it makes me more angry knowing that he's the reason I'm so angry. That's that shit you got. Now it's time to make it the hors d'oeuvre it can be. <laughs> That's up to you, not to him. I know, I know. Just no matter how old you get, you still have a lot to grow and to do. So what do you think you're going to do after this is all done? Do you have any plans? I want to figure out what's going on with the library. I think there's, uh, you know, Sue said it quite a bit. That's a heck of a mystery. I, uh, I'm keen to figure that out. I'm going to look and see if I can't find a way to unravel the thread. That sounds like you. Well, depending on how other things go, I may be joining you on that little investigation. I wouldn't mind company and uh, at least you can appreciate a good drink and a smoke. And I'll pull out my flask and offer it to you as I light up a smoke. We'll take the flask and take a sip. So if we do that, I will teach you how to smoke proper tobacco. You know, I don't mind a pipe every once in a while, but uh, <laughs> it's just so easy. Uh, maybe in your world. <laughs> my world, if you do the little cigarette things you have to wrap on yourself and it, yeah, it's a mess oh industrialization <laughs> let me tell you packs of cigarettes ham in cans there's so much so much as i've learned <laughs> well maybe after we get back from sue's world i'll uh, figure out what to do with this can you gave me I look forward to tasting it. 
and he'll give like Sam a big slap on the back. <laughs> yeah, and Sam will give the old nudge, just the leave it to Beaver dad <laughs> nudge. <laughs> All right, let's go make sure the kids aren't getting into any trouble. Yeah. I would love to talk to Sue. Yeah, what is she doing? <laughs> she is currently uh, in the kitchen. And because of course she is. And it's, you know how they have those montages where like the superheroes are getting ready for like the final fight, the final showdown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's basically going through the pantries, going through like the utensils drawer and just loading up her utility belt, so to speak, if that makes sense. So she looks very much in the zone right now. Normally Sue's very like, you know, bubbly and carefree, but she's got her game face on right now. Like she looks very serious. Like I gotta come back and I have to take back my city. Like I have to save them. Mm -hmm. So she looks very like no nonsense right now and just looks very determined. Okay. Tori will come up to Sue and just start off with asking, um, how are you feeling? Oh, Tori, she says. She glances at you for a moment, but then she immediately goes back to, you know, comp- um, doing what she's doing. And she's just grabbing random utensils and putting them onto like this sort of utility belt thing. And she says, oh, I'm ready. I'm ready to do this. This is what I was born to do. This is my purpose in life. Yeah, you look very well equipped. Uh... Well, you know, if I, I figure if things don't quite work out with me being a world-renowned chef, then I guess I'm just going to live the rest of my days just saving the city week after week after week. There's got to be an end to this for you. I, I think you, I think, I think you will be a chef and not have to just fight monsters all the time or food monsters all the time and slaving your world hopefully i don't know it from after her talk with dan the man it just from the sounds of it i don't know if this is ever going to end really and you know what the sad thing is she kind of stops maybe part of me kind of likes it kind of likes the idea that there's just going to be a never-ending monster of the week from here on out it sort of makes me feel like, I don't know, as I said, if, if this whole cooking thing doesn't work out, at least I still have a purpose in that world, a purpose in life. So maybe it's almost sort of like the superhero needs the super villains to have meaning. We need each other, as sad as that sounds. That's... That's deep, Sue. Um, And we write our own stories, but I understand wanting to have that purpose, you know? I don't know. It's It got me thinking a little bit while we were in Lonick's world and everything that was going on with Lonick, because, I mean, as a video game character, his main reason for being is to save that princess over and over and over again. And I couldn't help but see... I feel that. I get that. Maybe that's sort of why we got close really quickly, is I think we we bonded over that, kind of. Even yeah. though we never really addressed it in the first, like, directly. Yeah. Um, there's something I need to address to you, too. Because I don't know what's going to happen when we get into your world, but it's better to say it now than what? Don't worry, Tori. I'm not going to abandon you this time. No, 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 no. It's not that. After everything that's happened, that's the the last thing on my mind. Um, I don't know. It just... We've had a long journey, and maybe this weird rivalry we had was just for the sake of a good story, but I think 
I don't want to be, I don't want, want to be at odds with you anymore. I want there to be a resolution here and I need to complain about something. Um, you remember that chili you made for Felix? Yeah. Wow, that was a long time ago. It feels like it was forever ago. It was a really long time ago. Why? You you didn't burn your chili. I might have burned it a little bit. You You sabotaged my chili? Yes. Suddenly her her hands start to like ring a little bit. <laughs> And she, this is a very touchy subject for her, you, because if you remember, she gave that story about what happened the last time somebody messed with her chili. Mm -hmm. She didn't take it very well. Mm -hmm. So she's like, you, you, you messed with my chili? It's... She, she started getting, she's starting to see it a little bit. And then all of a sudden she just says, well, Knowing me, you probably actually improved it from how it was before anyway, she says. And then she starts to, like, throw, like, ran not at you, but, like, she starts, like, throwing, like, the spatula she has, like, against the wall. Um, uh, and <sighs> she's starting to go a little nutsy at the moment. Um, Dying, you guys. Sue, <laughs> uh, uh, Sue, Sue, just relax. You know, you know what, Tori? You know what? I have kept this within me for so long. There were so many things I wanted to say to you this whole time, but I was trying to be really, really nice, and I was trying to just let bygones be goddess, but you know what I realize right now? Just let it out. I'm not angry at you for being angry at me. I'm angry at myself. You know how I was saying that I just wasn't sure if I was tired or not of saving the world week by week where I am. Mm -hmm. When we were in your world, all of us changed. I'm normally the one who would jump in the middle of danger and save everybody. That's what I do. That's always been me. But for some reason, once I was in your world, that just got all warped up. Same thing that happened with Frankie. Same thing that happened with Star. I was a very different version of myself and in that moment I was I had a moment of weakness because the one time the one time that there was another opportunity to save someone to save you I think in that moment I succumbed to that feeling of being sick and tired of having to be the one to save people all the time for once, I was selfish and thought about my own well-being before everybody else, before an entire city of people. And that one moment of weakness had followed me up to this point. And I realized now I wasn't actually angry at you. I was angry at myself in that weak moment of weakness. And I'm sorry. You don't, you don't need to be sorry, Sue. And. She's still a ghost, but she'll like try to hug her and it'll go through, but you need to know this is not your fault. No one was themselves. No one had control over how are they acting in my world. My world is effed up, and so you have been... more than kind to me and to everyone else here and the most helpful person out of everyone in this group and I none of us would be here without you so please do not be angry at yourself you still in many ways were helping us and saving us every single day I appreciate that, Tori. Thank you. you. I don't talk about it with you all because I'd like to stay a positive person, but in my world, I don't always have the ability to save everyone. So 
some people I did lose. But at least I tried. In your world, I didn't even try. That's why I'm angry at myself. I didn't even try. So, <sighs> thank you for saying that. It's just gonna take time, I think. And maybe, maybe going back to my world and just feeling what it feels like to really be a hero there again might be able to, I don't know, get me back to the right headspace again. Of course, and we'll all help you along the way. Um, I don't, like I said, I don't want to be at odds with you anymore. You're, you're my friend, and I'm sorry for treating you less than that. And about the chili? And especially about the chili. Um, uh, next time you make a chili, I, I, I can't taste anything, but I can try to help you. And like, BP can help too to make sure we don't mess up. Like, and we can give it to Felix, like whatever you want to do. Oh, Felix. <sighs> that kid is going through a rough time right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. <sighs> Truce then. Truce. She will, again, even though you're a ghost, she's gonna give up an attempt hug, an attempt hug. Perfect. Okay. Whew. Now that I got that out of the system, I think I'm ready to go back. Go save your world. Let's all save the world. Mm hmm And we can end the scene there. Perfect. Perfect. That was so good. Hilarious. So crazy. Dying. Yes. Dying. Wow. <laughs> that shit was oh. piping, honey. I was not <laughs> ready. I wasn't ready. <laughs> no. But I love, like, out of everything, Ooh. Like Sue's headspace is the oh, craziest. Yeah. I love it. She's like, if the cooking thing doesn't work out, I guess I'll go back to monster fighting again. Because like her in her mind, like cooking is my end game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's 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 a very it's it's a it's a, a very like tropey idea of like. Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm the superhero, but I have other things I want to do with my life that I have prior have to prioritize mm -hmm. the world versus, yes. you know, culinary school. Right, right. It's a very common thing. Cordon Blue, baby. I need to yes. get in. Yes. Why can't it's sort? It's that it's that whole like. Uh, I think somebody wrote a bunch of memes about Dragon Age, and there was a, there was a comment in Inquisition where the character says, "Why can't they just uh, stay fixed? Why, why am I always fixing Thetis all the time?" What is it? <laughs> um, Funny. That was great, you guys. That was, that was so excellent. Good. That was fun. In that one moment when both Micah and Joe were just like, <laughs> oh, "Oh, it's going down!" Oh, ding, ding, ding. Not expecting that. No, that was fun. Uh, I was expecting that either. Going in that scene, I was expecting that. I was just in that moment. I was like, that makes sense. That she would be ticked. That she made sense. Mm -hmm. Why am I saving the world all the time? <laughs> me. The one person who I didn't save. Right. Can I just take a break? I don't have to save everyone all the time. <laughs> I'm not like even in your incredible. world. Not, it's not even in my world. Right. It's your world. Oh, you should yeah. know better. <laughs> no, anyway. Good job. Um, cool. So. Assuming nobody else is a role play, uh, you're all gonna gather uh, uh, with a bookmark, uh, and uh, Sue's gonna say, "Well, I just wanted you all to know before we go in, um, I had a long conversation with Lonick, and he definitely wanted to come join us on this excursion, but I could see in his eyes." that he really was worried about the people back at his home too. And now that we know that once we resolve things in our worlds, time starts to move forward, 
I figured maybe it would just make more sense for him to go and address some of the loose ends that he still has in his own world. Um, B might actually go with him so that, you know, they're not alone. Um, and I feel like B probably would fit in pretty well, uh, especially because his world is E for everyone. <laughs> so he wishes us good luck, though. I don't think we'll need luck, though. We have what it takes. Yes. All right. Onward, friends. Let's save Gourmet City once and for all. For this week, at least. <laughs> for this week. Oh my god, Monster of the Week. Hilarious. Mm-hmm. I love it. Oh dear. You don't even have to do a magic check anymore. Now that this is the sandbox part, um, you can just will the bookmark to work. And you will then be transported back to the world of superhero comic goodness. Once again, you will find yourselves um, looking very comic book drawn-esque, anime-esque into your original forms that you had while you were there. Once again, when you speak, there will be the speech bubbles appearing above you. But as soon as you arrive back in Gourmet City, everything definitely looks way different from before. Um, Before everything was bright and sunny and cheery, but now things are like dark and drab and gray skies and it just, you just have this looming feeling in the air. Um, The sky has a reddish hue to it. Um, they're not, it's not raining or thundering or anything, but it looks like there are storm clouds like overhead and it could start to rain and pour and thunder at any moment, but it hasn't yet. The biggest change that you've seen in Gourmet City is there's this massive pyramid, massive pyramid looking thing that is, um, that you see a whole bunch of people are sort of ens- essentially enslaved to build this massive looking pyramid thing. And the massive looking pyramid thing has a gigantic potato eyeball, potato eyeball on it right now. Um, but you're taking all this in and, and Sue's looking at it like, I don't know what to, to make of this. Oh, the eyeball it's just like the eyeball is a gigantic potato it's a it's a giant potato but like with a potato eye a big giant potato eye in the center okay if you can. so the potato and then a big potato eye like a potato <laughs> beholder potato correct. beholder correct <laughs> like a cyclops type yes correct yes. okay a potato cyclops Oh, that's new. Oh, I got a monologue. Oh, yeah. So yes. long, long, Let's long. do it. So long. <laughs> Gourmet City. Same place, different time. Now we know what's at stake and how to help Sue. Poor people here, unaware of the real aspects of the story. For them, the trouble's real. Now it's up to us to mop it up. That better be steak, as in S-T-E-A-K, steak. That better be that kind of steak. <laughs> um, 